And welcome to another episode of JP and the Beans Talk. Hello, I'm Beans. You bet. That's Beans. That's Here's JP. JP. Here we are, guys. We're here. Round 20-something. Round 20-something. Coming right at you. 24? Sure. 24? Sure. I feel like we had our Michael Jordan episode most recently. And then we're on Kobe. Is that right? Ooh, interesting. You're right. Kobe, good pull. He did rock the 2-4, didn't he? Most yes, well-known 2-4. 2-4 four. Four and 8. Yeah. Yeah. Better known as the 2-4. I think so, too. Yeah. No doubt. Good for us. MJ, Kobe, we're just we're peaking at the right time, Riles. I think that's pretty tremendous. Oh, we haven't begun to peak yet, mm. sir. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're on 24. I'm we're Outstanding. good. Outstanding. We're good. <laughs> My gosh. <laughs> hey. I'm all right. Good to see you. Good to be here. Absolutely. Yeah, love it. We're on the precipice of truly kicking off the 2022 uh, movie season. And it promises to be a not just lengthy but plentiful season. So excited for that with the Batman coming out in just a short week and some change. Yeah. Probably the best part of February is that it ends soon enough or sooner so we can actually get to March and get a little Batman action going. It's true. I am a little bummed out, though, about next month. I'm sorry. Because we are missing one movie because it got pushed back. And it was Morbius. And I'm sad. Ah, so happy. (laughs) What is its release date now? Do we even know? It's April, I think. Really? And it got just pushed back a month. My guess is they didn't want to compete with the Batman. They're like, okay, we have our own. Why would you? We have our own Bat Guy, so let's not compete him against the more popular Bat Guy. Mm. That's my guess. Mm-hmm. Multiple Batmen in the same movie, Bat People. Yeah, okay. <laughs> April first. I'd that's definitely an... rather be Batman than Morbius, though. That dude's just yeah. gross. Again, I said this last time. I'll say it again. I'll be okay if they keep delaying it. It keep just it never up. Gets made. Keep it up. Poor Jared Leto, though. In that sense, that's two zero oh for two on comic book characters. If that's the case, you know. If that, I should tell you something. If get out. Bombs. Get out. Take the hint, Jared. Get out. You're not welcome here. And it's not. You know, it's not even his full fault. Like, you know, like he did yeah. not get a fair shake at the Joker. He did not. Right. He, he's not really getting a fair shake at the. That's vampire. true. Didn't, didn't really see enough of him. In Suicide Squad. His role made zero sense in Suicide Squad. Yep. Uh, it did. It, it, there was no necessity for him being there. No. And, and what was in there wasn't great. Uh, and I'm curious when it came to the design of the character in the movie as well. Like how much, if anything, he had to do with it. Because it, uh, it wasn't outstanding. No, I think he was... That was just weird. Wasn't he pissed? Pretty sure he was pissed because a lot of his scenes got cut. Correct. Which is a pretty common thing for an actor to throw out there when they're taking heat for their role. So I don't know how much merit to that there is. I know that in general, Jared Leto is a capable enough actor that you'd think it could have gone better. But that that movie was just a mess. That movie right? was a mess. That Correct. was just, no, nobody's going to look great coming out of that. Least of all, Jared Leto's Joker. So it's true. But, but again, Jared, get out. You're done. You're done. We don't need it, you here. It's okay. I'm, you can't rebound with Morbius. You want to rebound with something? That's not it. Okay, but what would you cast him as? If you had any superhero See, I'm, at, I'm looking at, at his perspective. If I'm Jared, right, and I took the shot at the Joker, didn't work out for perhaps reasons outside of my own control. Okay. I'm going to come back as something that is... Not in the anti-hero realm like Morbius. I'm going to come back as a genuine, bona fide hero. Really? Yeah. I yeah, that's what I'm going for. See, Absolutely. I, what better way to be redeemed than a good guy that the people will root for? He could have shown up in Eternals. He, he could have. As, as what? Any of them. Okay, not Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh stands alone. But I mean, or Thena. just from a generic like point of view, like he could have been an Eternal, right? I guess I don't know. For me, he, he's you're asking a good question, and I don't have a particular who should he have been instead, precisely, but I... not Morbius, because no one should be Morbius. We shouldn't be getting this movie. 
I'm getting my rant in early. Morbius, <laughs> Morbius should be like a side character that gets a show. Gets killed immediately. <laughs> Blade kills him dead. Awesome. Uh, see, awesome. Jared needs to be. That's like, what should happen. It could happen. We never know. Okay, you know what? You know what? Tell you what. If they're playing the long game here and they're just setting up an awesome like introductory kill for Blade, like in the first five minutes of his movie, Morbius shows up and we're like, oh man, this could be a sweet crossover, and then he just kills him. Okay, worth it. Then worth it. Okay. Then I'm in. Okay. I don't think that's what we're gonna get. See, for me, he's got to play somebody creepy, whether it be hero or villain. It's got to be something. He's got. He's just got a creepy. Like no offense to Jared Leto, but he's got that. He's got like a kind of. I think it's the eyes. He's got real beady eyes. He's he got a little. He got a bit of a creepy kind of face. Okay. So for me, like that's why I think Morbius works for him a little bit because it's like, oh, you're a creepy vampire guy. Ugh. You know what I mean? Doctor Doom? No. God, no? no. 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 He's not commanding enough to be Doctor Doom. No, for me, it voice to be is a little like, too light for that. I, I don't disagree. Uh, for me, like I could maybe wrap my head around like a Mister Sinister. Okay. Kind of, because he's creepy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna keep pondering this question because this is a great, great question. Or like uh, the the dude, <laughs> like the guy, the scientist who's responsible for uh, the Clone Saga. Like, you know what I'm talking about? The, sure. The Jackal. Like oh something obscure like oh that that you could kill him off for and no one would care. That's a mm-hmm. villain you don't care about killing, but he could pull that off because it's creepy. He could be a Doctor Strange adversary. I'll give you that. Like yeah. Nightmare. Sure. Nightmare would be cool. Yeah. I'd be okay with that. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. It's got, like I said, it's, it's just got to have that creepy factor. For, for me, he can't be like... Who could he be in the X-Men? I feel like he could... There's there's somewhere in there, like as a mutant, if he was he younger, fit in. If he was younger, yep. Nightcrawler. I'd give okay. you a young Nightcrawler if okay. he was younger. I don't see the He's, Nightcrawler He can't thing. be that, though, now. You have to be older and creepier. I know that Channing Tatum has been connected to... Uh, Gambit. Thank you. Wow, I just blanked to Gambit. But he could pull a Gambit. No, Jared Leto cannot pull a Gambit. Why not? Mm-mm. I just don't see it. Okay. okay. His face is too, like... It's all in the face, man. It's just, <laughs> you just can't get creepy out of your mind with no, him, right? It's okay. Like, it's, all right. And maybe, and maybe that's just because shaded I, I by the Joker experience. It, it might be because okay. that might be the only thing I've seen him as. Yeah. So, but yeah. like for me, his face. I think I swear to God, I think it's the eyes. He's mm-hmm. got beady eyes, dude. <laughs> like, if the lights, not trustworthy dude, eyes. No, if you were in a room with Jared Leto, <laughs> and all of a sudden there's a blackout, the lights are out. I think you'd see his eyes in the light Ooh. or in the dark. Okay. You know what I mean? I think sure. that's the first, like, you're like, oh, man, look for a light switch. And the first thing you see is, Jared, is that you? And he's like, yeah, because his eyeballs are just flashlights, essentially. <laughs> now that, Here's the deal. Now that I've put it out there, I badly want to see Morbius get killed by Blade early in the Blade movie. Not after a prolonged struggle that lasts the entire movie early. That'd I hate be awesome. to tell you this. If anything, he'll be like don't, the antagonist don't. that flips sides and they work together. Uh, it's just it's happened before frick me i'm sorry unbelievable all right what what else should we talk about besides jared leto and his beady eyes well we can talk about other guys okay with bats sure oh batman uh, i was thinking more man bat man bat there's another good one for jared leto man bat and then i don't have to see his beady eyes yeah yeah just hide him in the prosthetics and he can be the weird professor before he turns into man bat okay he's in <laughs> he's in <laughs> good yeah, no batman yeah, let's talk a little Batman. Yeah, Batman. He's here. Mm-hmm. He's present. He's he's alive. Batman's he's in the house. Um, we ran out of real estate to chat Lord of the Rings, but I've been I've been just chomping at that bit for an extended period of time now. Excited to discuss what little we know about the new Lord of the Rings TV show being released much later this year by the great Amazon. That's going to be exciting, and then I think there's a few DC things we can we can dabble in from a future perspective. Yeah, we got some new pictures and stuff. Yeah, yeah, a lot of good, a lot of good DC content. We'll see. A lot of good future talk. That's great. I mean, this is this is just nice to talk about something other than Marvel for once. You know what? It I is. I love Marvel. Yeah, but hey, it's good DC to have a little variety, right? DC's finally given us some things, taking their shot. Let's see what they come up with. All they, right, they so, put the carrot in front of us. The Batman movie, Riley. Yes. 
We are just, again, week and a half away. All right. Where do you, on your anticipation meter, sit with this movie? Scale of zero being Morbius, 10 <laughs> being <laughs> Spider-Man, you, No Way Home. You understand we have to go see that movie when it comes I know, out now. I know. Just, I know. Just, just so we can confirm it is our zero at yes. this point. If not, just to make to fun be. of it. It's going to be. Okay. <laughs> Why'd you come out of that and be like, that was my favorite movie ever? <laughs> Best movie of the year so far. Best movie of the year. I can't uh, believe they did what they did. <laughs> so, on that well established scale, okay. Zero being Morbius, 10 being Spider Man, No Way Home. Where are you at with this one? Oh, man. No Way Home. That's, that's a bar. That's a good 10. That's a, that's that's a, a good that's 10, a 10, right? Yeah. That's a great scale. That bar is set high. I predict it at like a 7 or an 8. Now, now, where do you anticipate it right now? Like for you, your anticipation going into it, like how excited are you for this movie? How much yeah, are you looking forward I'm at to a, it? I'm at a seven right seven now. Seven right now. But, okay. and, but I mainly think that's because it hasn't hit me yet. Like mm. I feel like sure. when we get into the theater, I'm going to be like, oh, this is a nine. Okay. This is going to be sweet. Okay. Now, I think No Way Home was like, okay, I shouldn't say nine. I'll, I'll put it at an eight. But like No that's Way great. Home, that's great. I was expecting... Toby Maguire. So that one was like out of 15. It's not even fair. <laughs> broke the meter. It's not even fair. Just broke it. So I get that. In the Batman's defense, yep. it's hard to compete with. But I'm at, I'm, I'd say seven right now. Okay. I'm going to go one notch lower. I'm going to say I'm at a six. Okay. Um, this is the build up to this movie, just in my own mind, right? I can't speak for everybody. Yeah. But it has been, it has felt like a very out of place movie and that doesn't mean it's not going to be good doesn't mean it's going to be bad but looking back to the batman movies that i cherish the most yeah okay the dark knight trilogy the christian bale batman christopher nolan whoever you want to name drop there those movies came a good chunk of time after the batman character cinematically had run its first course right so you've got I'm going to do a little Batman history lesson here. Okay, I'm going to go real big picture, and we can and we'll narrow it back down. Okay. okay? Mm-hmm. So the Batman movie with Michael Keaton came out late 1980s. I want to say 88. Okay, 89. I was close. 1989 with the Joker. All right. So to bring our boy Jared Leto. Oh wait, no, he wasn't in it. Jack Nicholson was the Joker. Throwback. Tremendous. Really solid movie. Okay. Has its sequel in 92. Batman Returns also has Catwoman, okay? And those were the two movies where we had our guy Michael Keaton as Batman. Two good movies. The original Batman movie, much more well-received. Second one, a little more divisive, okay? Still good. Then you've got Val Kilmer, who takes on the Batman in 95. Then George Clooney in 97. <laughs> and that really torpedoed the Batman movie franchise for an extended stretch of time like think about how long of a period that is especially in today's movie years to go from 1997 to 2005 when batman begins came out it's almost 10 years that's i mean right it's a solid eight year block which is good it needed that buffer it needed that almost that purge right almost that if you want to translate hollywood years like let's say one hollywood year is worth three or four years Okay, so we're we're doing the dog year math here. Okay. All right? So in other words, you can reset things more quickly in Hollywood than you can in real life. All right? So eight years, call it 24 dog years or (laughs) movie years, and we get this Batman Begins movie, but with a guy playing Bruce Wayne that none of us knew about, right? Nobody knew who Christian Bale was. He had been in a few things, but nothing nearly as noteworthy as that. That felt like a very natural, hey, jumping on point for a reimagining of the character. Yeah. Right? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. No need to retread the ground of that trilogy. That trilogy concludes in the early 2010s. And then we get Batman versus Superman. I was going to say we got nothing until For just a couple of years, though. No, we got nothing until now. I I wasn't even going to count that. (laughs) Yeah. And that... (laughs) I'm biased. Yeah. I didn't like that Batman movie. Batman vs. Superman. 
yeah, I'm not going to stand here and defend that one. Uh, and Justice League, Ben I, Affleck getting his two shots at the Batman character. I that felt too anything. soon. Like when that happened, when they said, hey, we're going to put Batman against Superman, first of all, why? Second of all, it seemed too soon since the Dark Knight trilogy to get another Batman to me. That's how it felt. I, w- I would have been okay with more time passing between Dark Knight Rises and Batman vs. Superman. Okay. Would you have you been more okay with it, though, if it would have been Christian Bale's Batman? Correct. Okay. Correct. That's all I was so wondering. Not a pure like time issue, but more of a, hey, we're reimagining, reinventing, re... Yeah, representing I, this character. I think I wasn't what, ready for that. And so this, where I'm going with this, is this movie, I don't know how to feel about it yet. Because I'm not sure the... I did not I did not enjoy Ben Affleck's version of Batman. Not on Ben Affleck, but out of all the Batman that I've seen in the movies or even read in the comics, that one's pretty low on my list. Like, just a grim, grumpy SOB. Not a whole lot of hope going on. I understand Batman's dark. Yep. But he's not hopeless. And that version of Batman was as close to hopeless as I've, again, seen or read any version of Batman. And so this new Batman, who is apparently separate from any other connected tissue within this DC multiverse that they're or cinematic universe that they're trying to put together. I just don't know how to feel about it yet. I don't feel like there's a natural flow where we've arrived at this point. So it's going to have to come out. It's going to have to kill it for me to go. Now I understand where this fits in the Batman pantheon. It just feels very unsettled, which is why I'm at a six. Uh, okay, so I think the difference for me is that. <laughs> I've kind of so I didn't watch the Justice League, and good for you. And I, I stand by that decision. <laughs> um, I did watch Batman versus Superman. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I think the biggest problem with that movie was that we did not have a Ben Affleck Batman movie to go off of. Sure. Like we're starting fresh sure. with this character. Yep. With his version in a. Not in a solo movie. It's with Superman. And then, well, all this bad stuff happened. Well, we didn't watch him go through any of that. Yep. To get to that point where he yep. is hopeless. Yep. Like, his Robin died and it was supposedly Dick Grayson. But how are we supposed to know that? Right. You know? Right. Um, apparently, That's a good point. Hard, hard to really have much of an emotional attachment. Correct. To all that past when we haven't seen that past. It would have been shown it at all. Like it would have been different if like we would have gotten a Batman Joker movie where yep. we watched Jared Leto kill Dick Grayson. Sure. And we're like, yep. Because he would. No, be, that, that's a valid point. That's a really good point. He would be. He would be hopeless if yep. he watched Dick die. Dick's yep. like his favorite. It's true. It's very it's true. true. It's he likes him more than Damien. It's just saying something. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't know. So for me, I guess like. Going in, this is pretty much my fresh start. Gotcha. Because I I didn't get attached to Ben, a- ben mm. Affleck's Batman. Mm-hmm. I didn't like Ben Affleck's Batman. Yep. I was I mean the armored Batman suit was cool. Right. Um, that's the one thing I, I took away from that movie. Oh, <laughs> cool. Cool armored suit, Next, bro. I don't give a crap about the voice modulator. We can throw that away. That was an awful idea. <laughs> so like I don't understand. So but from what I've heard from this movie and the fact that they're going for a more detective-esque mm. essence of Batman. Yep. I love, from what I've heard with Robert Pattinson, talking about like Robin in the future and stuff like that. Yeah. He, he totally wants it. Yeah. Which is a lot different than Christian Bale, who didn't want a Robin. Right, yeah. He and Christopher Nolan were both very... Anti-Robin. Yeah, and Robin's never showing up in this. And... Ironically enough, he... Does yeah, yeah, kind of. <laughs> but in their own in their own way. Yeah, yeah. But for Robert Pattinson, he's like, yeah, yeah I want it to be a twelve year old kid. Like, mm. I want it to be a Robin. Sure, a I comic guys... reflection of yes. the Robin. He's like, character. I want yep. that. Okay. Um, and ah oh, man, mm. I, I'd like just to see it. It. I mean, it kind of. It's. It's going to be their Batman Begins, pretty much, from mm-hmm. what I probably mm-hmm. the takeaway. But I guess I have more faith. In Robert Pattinson's Batman, in the aspect of this might be our best 
comic accurate that we get on yeah. screen. Yep. And oh, and yep. Maybe ever. Yep. Because if he's want, we're getting a year one. This is the start. Yep. You know, he's a younger Batman. Right. We might see the Robins get to grow up. Yep. Like this opens the door to having a legit good. The, their take on Under the Red Hood or yeah. something like to that level if he decides to go past the trilogy. Everything's opened. I, exactly. At that point. Like, I have I have legitimate hope mm. Like with this. Like, again, with Christian Bale, you love Christian Bale's Batman trilogy, but you weren't... The Bat family was non-existent outside of Alfred and Lucius. Yeah, it, it was... I mean... And Lucius You're, you're making great. great points. Like, you're making me a... You're, you're giving me hope. You're making me a believer because... To piggyback off what you're saying, or where I think you're going with the Christian Bale portrayal of Batman, that is such a intentionally and decidedly grounded version. Like it obviously draws inspiration for the comics. It's obviously the yes. same character, but it puts such robust limitations on itself and on its world that the things that you see in Batman comics that Batman does. Like, that version never was even going to attempt. No. No, it was it was very much an intentional, hey, if Batman existed in the real world, here's what we think that would look like. Yeah. So it was almost like this alternate, like we love talking about, right? This alternate version yeah. of Batman. Awesome, totally worthwhile, still a great portrayal of the character, still going to stand the test of time. But you're right. Like, there has not yet been a comic book accurate version of Batman on the screen that has crushed it. Correct. And this movie, to your point, has the opportunity to do that and start with a relatively fresh slate since they're not doing an origin movie, but they're also not doing the 20 years into it. Correct. They're starting at year two, I believe. Year one or two year or two. three. Yep. Uh, so there is some tremendous opportunity uh some tremendous opportunity there and i think i think also too we get to see not just batman grow as a hero but we're yeah. going to be able to see his rogues gallery get built mm. like we're going to see mm -hmm. like obviously that's not going to be the riddler's final look if he at the end of that movie is still wearing a paper bag and is <laughs> scared to show his face to people sure i'll be a little disappointed but i think we're going to see him develop into the the villain he's supposed to be mm. uh and hopefully not killed off like that's my big thing. Okay. I think we're gonna see Oswald Cobblepot take over the pretty much the mafia side of, of yep. Gotham in this movie. Like Carmine will probably get pushed out. Yep. You'll probably watch that happen. Yeah. Um if they do a Court of Owls build, that'd be insane. Yep. Like that'd be sick. Right. Make everything worth it. Right. And I know they uh Barry Keegan Keoghan, Yep. He's in this movie. Yep. Rumored to be the Joker. Or just another character. It hasn't been like confirmed sure. on who he is. Sure. But well, then there Point you go. Point is, there's potential. Exactly. Right? Yeah. It's building blocks. Yeah. No that that's a really that's a really good good argument on your on your part, Riles. Because um, even thinking back to the the original Batman movies with Michael Keaton, and as that version and universe of Batman, if you will, kind of evolved, it got it, it was always cartoonish to a certain extent. Like, it never took itself too seriously. Like, it was really cool. The yeah. two Michael Keaton movies are both pretty dang cool. Even watching them, you know, 25 approximately years later. Um, or sorry, 25. Good grief. 30. Hello. Math. Uh, <laughs> point is decades. Yeah. <laughs> I should have stuck For with sure. decades. No, you're good. Later. Um, they still hold, I, I think, some cool factor to them. But they got progressively more cartoonish, took themselves so... They just didn't give a rip They're about campy. the source material. They got They're very campy. campy. And it was I mean, it was brutal. The Batman and Robin movie, oh my gosh. It's so tough. It's, it's impossible. Is that the one with Mr. Freeze? Yes. I was just going to bring that up. Can yes. we get a comic accurate Mr. Freeze? One that's actually terrifying? There's a terrifying. place for that. There's a place for that. Um, but that... That version really petered out. And then we got, as we already covered, the really precise, very specific flavor of the Christian Bale version and the nobody's really a fan, sorry, Ben, <laughs> version of the Ben Affleck Batman. And so this is an opportunity to start fresh and to really do it 
justice from this perspective of there have been some outstanding Batman comics that have come out since the Dark Knight trilogy, which we talked about last yeah. week with Scott Snyder's run. And the Dark Knight trilogy drew from a lot of long Halloween um, influences and inspiration, which is great. But there is such a rich pantheon of recent Batman comics that, my goodness, the potential is limitless. But this is the most important movie. Like, you got to get the first one right. Correct. You can't be okay. You've got to crush it and generate your own almost your own hype by being that good because again the most recent taste of batman we've had listen i saw the snyder cut i really enjoyed the snyder cut i really enjoyed as much as i could that version of batman in the snyder mm-hmm. cut but i am of a low percentage of people that have seen that version right yeah. everybody else either saw it and didn't like it which is fair or heard from everybody hey this sucks and didn't see it also fair so there's there's a lot riding on this movie for a batman character and it doesn't need here here's the other thing i don't need this character i don't need this version to tie into justice league i almost hope it doesn't in any way i don't trust warner brothers at this point in time to handle that agreed the right the the extended family is not healthy enough to really go to the reunion correct at this point it's like why don't you do your own thing for as long you guys still have covid stay away (laughs) right right so I would be very happy if Batman was reborn in his own universe. Like that would be that'd be great. And you know, come to think of it, it's been it's been ten years since Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. So in that respect, since the best Batman movies we've had, there is there has been enough time that's passed for us to get a new, if you will, best Batman that we've seen. Yeah. So I I'm hopeful. I'm, I wouldn't say I'm optimistic. I'm nervous. I'm really nervous that it's going to suck. <laughs> but I really hope it doesn't. I hope it's great. I'm I'm looking forward to it. I think Robert Pattons. I, I always have faith when the actor that's playing the role yep. really loves the character. Yep. And that seems to be Robert's case. Yep. So I'm hoping for that. I'm hoping... You know, over time, we get to see this loner character develop into, like, essentially a family man. Yeah. Because that's what he does. Yeah. Like, I want... You know how bad I want a Bat family? Like, a, an authentic yeah. uh, Nightwing Batman interaction on screen? I'd love that so much. No doubt. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, it's... uh they got to crush this first one. So let's let's hone in on this first one. We yep. kind of we kind of pulled the lens back a little bit. Let's narrow it and bring it back in. What are some of your predictions for this movie? Okay? One of mine just as a yep. way of introduction is I have this sense that there is a major character that has intentionally been kept out of the marketing campaign. Whether it's being played by our guy Barry mm-hmm. of Eternals fame. Good for you, Barry. Remember he was in Eternals? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, whether it's Barry playing a villain or someone else playing, hey, anybody, like a Robin, I think there's a major character that hasn't been shown. And I don't have a great sense of who that would be in particular, but I think we're going to get a character uh, reveal that's going to be exciting that we just haven't even had teased in any tangible way. That's one of my predictions. What do you got? Um, so I kind of already made one prediction about uh, the Penguin taking over yep. the crime. Yep. The crime mafia, the organized crime in Gotham. Um, I will say I am going to predict that at the end of the movie, like their little tease for the next one, they'll probably tease another villain. But I also think Bruce will get something on the Flying Graysons. Like, Ooh. like Dick getting set up. Because if... If Robert's true to what he said, I think I think Robin's down the line, and you have to start Dick Grayson off early for it to work. Right. Like, D- Dick Grayson as Robin in one movie, and then the next movie, he's Nightwing, and you get Jason Todd as Robin, or something like that, in that sense. Like, I don't think I need Dick Grayson as Robin for more than one movie, okay. personally, but okay. that's because I enjoy him as the Nightwing character more. Yeah. At this point, he's probably been Nightwing longer than Robin. 
Mm. Don't hold me to that. I don't know. But... No, I, I think that's valid. I think that's valid. But, and then uh, villain-wise, though, I do agree with you. There's got to be somebody else. Like, whether it is for the setup for the next movie. Right. Or if it is this working around. Because to me, the way the trailers have played off is the Riddler's, like, revealing something to Batman about, hey, sure. I figured this out. You didn't. Help me figure it out kind of thing. So Kind of a twisted partnership. Yeah, in yeah. a sense. So for me... Yeah. That's why I'm getting the quarter owl vibes. Yeah. So I'm going to throw that in there. I'm going to stick with that. I might be completely off. I like cause that. Because I have been before. But, and then, mm. you know, Catwoman is just going to be doing her own little thing. Catwoman will be involved. I, and, and that's not, you know. I'm cool with that. I'm not, I'm not trying to get selfish. That's not an insignificant number of characters, mm. right? Of uh, major Batman characters. Catwoman, Penguin, Riddler. So I, I'm not saying it's not enough. But it just feels like something has been intentionally not shown, particularly when the movie is just shy of three hours. Oh yeah, for sure. Long. That's a lot of time. A lot of time. I. That's that's my hunch. Also, is Gordon Commissioner? Do we know that yet? Is he established commissioner, or is there somebody else? Okay, good question. Let's. Like, I want to know where we're at in his career because if he's I'd like assume this whole time, yes, but I kind of hope he's commissioner. Let's see what we got here. Bear with me. Just listed as James Gordon. Dang. So they're leaving that up yep. up in the air. So not, at least as it's listed on IMDb, not committed on the IMDb's as commissioner. And I'll say this too. So the dude that they've got listed as playing the district attorney, notably not Harvey Dent, it is Gil Coulson. Uh... Not a great, what do I want to say? Not a good dude, okay? Not a good dude in the comics, as a matter of fact. Oh, that's a legit character? Yeah. Okay, it's not like a, oh, he's in year one? I have a feeling a lot of those, like, district attorneys and uh, the mayor, you know the mayor's going to be corrupt. Gotham's mayor is always corrupt. Somebody's got their money in the hands of the, in the, uh, the mayor's, pockets right always mayor's never a good dude if you don't believe me watch the gotham tv show the mayor was corrupt the entire time Ah, i was wrong thought it was this one must be a different one okay is he like a villain villain or does he just he's just a bad dude just a bad yeah okay unsavory public servant yeah but okay do you think riddler dies no okay you think honestly if they do this right None of none of his rogues gallery should die in mm-hmm. this. Yeah, I don't if see why do any of these right. characters. I don't see why any of these characters would die. Catwoman, Catwoman Penguin. won't die. Yeah, but like, because if you think about it, that's what Christopher Nolan did well. None of the villains died, correct? Ra's al Ghul did. Okay, besides Raish. Yeah. Or Rash. Or yep. Yep. <laughs> Pronunciation is different <laughs> in every movie, cartoon, video game. But uh, Scarecrow was. Throughout the entire trilogy. Right. Not as Scarecrow the whole time that he was there. You know, it kind of bookended. Christopher Nolan actually killed off a decent number of those villains. Bane, Bane died. I couldn't remember. Yeah. Bane, yeah. Bane died for Bane sure. died. Catwoman blew him away. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember. And then, but Joker lived, correct? Yep. Right. Because he was supposed to come back right. for the third one and then didn't because, hey, he Ledger passed away. But Yep. Yep. So kind of a mix, kind of a mixed bag with Christopher Nolan. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, but not. Uh, oh, Bane got blown not, up. not a lot of them lived. Oh, Bane got destroyed. Oh. Catwoman rolled in on the did Talia, on the tumbler bike and just. Oosh. Did Talia die too? She did. Was yeah. She no. Okay. Oh, you need to rewatch that movie, right? I know because I remember. Well, no, I remember her stabbing him. Yep. And I know she's the one who's responsible for the bomb. And then yeah, it gets foggy after that. <laughs> And, gets, I, and it gets real fuzzy. And then I think, well, I mean, I remember him carrying the bomb off into the bay or whatever. And he's like, uh, just remember me because it could be anything like putting the coat on an orphan boy. And he's like, Bruce? And he's like, no. And then he leaves. But I think mainly because it's college humors Batman that I'm thinking of that I remember there you that go. scene so there well. There you go. Yep. <laughs> so. Yep. Yep. <laughs> 
Yeah, some good some good humor fodder in that one. Yeah, I, I think all the rogues gallery will live as well. I, I don't think there is a major character that's getting uh, that's getting killed. I, I tell you what, I'm really excited outside of just the general enthusiasm for seeing uh, another Batman movie. Within the movie, I am looking forward to seeing Andy Serkis as Alfred. Uh, yeah, he's gonna be sweet. That's that really excites me. Um, and, and I think that's. I think that's what I got for this one, Riles. Anything else you want to hit on? Okay, I am going to ask you this. Hit because, me. Because, I mean, this is for future. Yep. Okay. So, and we might have touched on this before, but it's been a while, and I want my memory refreshed. But Great. But my question to you Do it. is in the next two movies, because yep. I know we discussed that the second one might be Joker, the third one might be Bane. Is there a Batman rogue that you would like to see that A, hasn't been on screen yet, Yep. or B, needs to be redeemed? A.K.A. Mr. Freeze, A.K.A. Poison Ivy, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. That's my question to you. Okay. I already have my pick. It's a really good question. And it's obscure. Okay. Well, it's not obscure, but it's... I mean, Court of Owls, and that's not an individual villain, so I'm going to work on coming up with an individual pick. No, I think that's a yours. great choice. But Court of Owls, just in general, as an adversarial entity... I would, I would love to see. Like the Joker is always going to be out there at some point, but I would not say I'm eager for a Batman Joker confrontation. I agree. We've had it a lot. Yep, we've we've had plenty. So I am I'm all for a uh, all for a Court of Owls um, opposing Batman. Seeing that on the big screen would be great. Court of Owls too. They could work it so. There are other rogues working with the core. Exactly, it would work yeah. out really well. Yeah. So that's my. That's. Uh, I don't know if that's a fair pick or not. It's not an I'd individual. Say it's fair. Okay. It's totally. Fair. Okay. I feel good about that one then. I'm yeah. gonna, I'm gonna settle with that. I'll keep pondering your question in terms of an individual, but that's that's my answer for the time being. I'm gonna go with Clayface. I think oh, out of nice all. Nice job. The, I think out of all the choices. Sure. I think I'd want to see that because he hasn't been done before. And he's, sure. He's an, a cool, interesting like monster-esque character for the Batman. Yep. And, like, the detective work for figuring out which person is Clayface would be mm. outstanding. So I think that's my pick. And then if, you had, if I had to redeem anyone, it probably would be Mr. Freeze. Okay. If I had to redeem anyone. Yeah, I like that. I like that pick. I am i can't say that I'm hankering for a Poison Ivy appearance uh, anytime soon. Look, if they do her, she better be... Have she better? She better. She, hey, she better be a looker, okay? Like, Fair she enough. really needs to sell the art of seduction. <laughs> Otherwise, it ain't working. And I'm not trying to be weird. I'm trying to stick with the character, okay? And secondly, I want a more like. Let's be real. Uma Thurman's look is so bad in that movie. It's not as great. Poison Ivy. It is yeah. not good. So if they give her like the green skin and like they chill with like her comic accurate look. I'll be good to go. There you go. That's my request you if you do Poison Ivy. I liked what you said earlier about Mr. Freeze, that you could get a really legit Dude, if they do Mr. Like the, Freeze. If they do like the 90s story from the cartoon yep. yeah. and establish that background where it's just depressing, that'd be great. Yeah. we've Here's the deal. like We've seen a lot of great Batman villains in these movies. Like the, This just make me want to rewatch all of the Dark Knight trilogy again in the very near future because i love those movies the villains in them are tremendous great adversaries for batman um so there's yeah there's a handful that could be redeemed so to speak but even i was thinking like two-face i loved what they did with two-face in the dark knight that was great and so i'm not eager to see that revisited i'm good with that too yeah um i enjoyed anna hathaway's catwoman so i'm not uh Oof, I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about Catwoman in this particular movie. I'm more looking forward to seeing uh, the Penguin in this movie and e- even the Riddler. I think the Penguin is my is my pick for most anticipated villain for this flick. Penguin? Yeah. Yeah. Fair. See, for for me, I'm okay with Catwoman being established now. Yep. Because then it kind of builds onto like the will they... <laughs> there you go. And by the way, she's way more realistic than Rachel. Okay. Way more realistic. <laughs> We've gotten to that before, but it makes this one makes more sense. 
Okay, I'll just throw that out there. Um, yeah, that's all I got on that, actually, to be honest with you. <laughs> like, it's more believable. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, that's that's great. I to tie this off, I hope it'll be. I hope it'll exceed expectations. I think our expectations are pretty realistic going in. It's boy, is it taking a swing with that kind of a runtime? That is a confident runtime. Like you can't you can't have people sit through a three hour movie and have it stink. I'm that so is excited. bold. I am excited. That's bold. So I'm trying to I'm trying to grasp onto those reasons for hope as much as I can. Um, but we'll find out in a in a very short amount of time whether or not it's worthwhile. And we're starting something fresh and exciting, or I, I don't think it's going to be a middle ground. Or it's going to be a well, that stunk. <laughs> Dude, I hope it ain't that. I'm me too. So oh, sad. me too. I'll walk me out too. of that theater with my head down, and be like, y'all. Especially as I've talked myself into this. Hey, it's been ten years since the Dark Knight Rises. I, I'm opening up my heart to being ready mm-hmm. for a fresh Batman take. Uh, so I'm hoping I don't get hurt, but sometimes you get hurt in love. So we'll we'll it, see. It can't be worse than Justice League. <laughs> we'll see. All right, good stuff on the Batman. So should we look at the DC? Let's do stills. Yeah, or let's whatever. Do it. Let's whatever do you it. want to license it as. What would you like me to to Google here? Oh, um, that's a good question. Um, D. DC, hmm, recent DC movie, oh. Leave me hanging. Leave me hanging. What do you got for me? Uh, uh, so, let me see. I got to figure out how to Google this. This is a little bit tricky. It's a little bit tricky. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe upcoming DC movies. Sure. Maybe upcoming. Uh, let me see here. Upcoming DC movies uh, news. Uh, See, I can for you. And then uh, movie stills. Let's let's try. Let's try that. Images. Poop on a stick. <laughs> um. <laughs> Okay, here. We'll just do this. We'll do this. Because I know Black Adam came out. So, Black Adam movie still. Or movie. Yeah, let's try this. Black Adam. Bless that guy. So, or new Black Adam shots. Try that. New Black new Black Adam pictures. I'm, I should have been more prepared. I apologize. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Did that work? There you go. Did it work? There you go. I don't know if that's new or not, though. That one looks new. That one looks definitely new. Right? I haven't seen that. I'm going to look up. You know what I'm going to look I'm just... We're going to cheat. Cause hey, cheat away. Doctor... Not, not Dr. Savannah. Dr. Fate. There we go. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's see the website. Yeah, so type in, type in Black Adam, Doctor Fate. Black Adam. We'll 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 start off with Doctor Fate because this is probably most excited I am, and then we can go off that. So, yeah, here we go. There you go. See, I found some pictures. See, we're cooking with gas now. So click that. So yeah, that's the new Doctor Fate costume. The only weird thing is he's got no eye holes. <laughs> <laughs> which people have pointed out because right how's the guy supposed to see yeah definitely no eye holes right there's some there's holes? some slits there that you could sort of kind of maybe maybe it's just the convinced. angle and the lighting sure but holy shit that's a sweet costume <laughs> that is a sweet co- pierce brosnan as dr fate is a beautiful cast Do- dude dr fate is a well-designed character like it's fantastic like fantastic yeah big fan so then so yeah so he looks like he's gonna be sweet agreed <laughs> i need to plan this out better next time i apologize hey, um yeah and then hawk here's man. what I, here's what i'm gonna get into black adam hawkman hawkman looks <sighs> sick how about that look hawkman looks dope can you blow that up there's no doubt you are blowing that up beautiful 
Look at that guy. I mean, that looks sweet. Is the mace there? Ish, maybe. Not really. I don't see it. No, not really. Here's what I like about about these Black Adam shots, right? Is that they're not they're not doing this redesign where like, well, yeah, we're doing this character, but I'm not sure that uh, I'm not sure we really care for the design. It's like, no, come on now, come on. This this character looks great in the comics. Let's just drop him just as he just as he appears in the comics in this movie. And so I'm excited for that. I think that's great. Hawkman looks outstanding. Doctor Fate looks outstanding. I th- Adam Smasher looks outstanding. I'm about to say, did they show? They, I think there's a picture of him too. Oh yeah, because I have not seen that. Yeah, you're doing this right. You we should have YouTube it. it. You better believe it. I was like, I think there was a video. I think there was a video. Oh yeah. I say it. Oh yeah. We need to find that video. That's what we need to do. <laughs> this is so bad. Okay. Because I think it was. Oh, maybe. Wait, hold on. Maybe that was it. Go. No, it's gonna be here. Oh, DC Heroes. Yep. Here you go. This is what they released around the Super Bowl. Why did? When did I miss? How did I miss that trailer? I don't know. How did I miss that entire? Tra- I missed that trailer. And I missed the Doctor Strange trailer. I missed both of them. You're just missing out on things, Riles. I guess. Can't be missing out. Oh wait, no. I saw this part. I don't know. Man, I'm lost anymore. Uh, uh. Here we go. I'll find this for you. The World Needs Heroes trailer. Yep. Okay. You. Oh, I, okay. I gotcha. I gotcha. So, oh, she, was, she really liked his face there. Yeah, so watch the DC Heroes trailer. That's what we're watching. Oh, the flash shoot doesn't look too bad, though. Too bad it's going to disappoint me. <laughs> hey, and there's time for Aquaman Flash. Aquaman just showing up in his weird See, body I, suit. I want him in his... I want Aquaman in his orange and they, green they suit actually really all did the, the time. They really did the orange well. They crushed it. I was surprised. Yeah, I and want then, that all the time. I have no idea who those two were. Oh, the fun. He, he's got nice little lenses in his helmet. Yeah. That's that, that's cool beans. The Flash looks fine. Flash looks just great. Batman looks fantastic. Man, that Hawkman is sweet. There's your Hawkman. Dr. Fate's sweet. And that's... Okay, those are the other two. Yep. Okay, that's all I needed. The, you got the, it! This was, this was less impressive than I thought. <laughs> so... <laughs> hey, here's the point. These movies may underwhelm us when they actually come out. Entirely possible, all right? But at least for what we can see right now, they've got the look down. I'm going to say, the, right? like the they're suits not, are comic accurate. Yeah, they're not and, botching the look of the characters. And not in a gross way either. The looks, No, the looks are terrific. So I think it's fantastic. It's encouraging. Again, does it mean the movie's going to be great? Of course not. No, it it's could be fine. crummy. But, but DC always be on edge. But I like it that they're trusting the looks of the comics. Because even you know, if you want to pick on the Marvel movies a little bit, right? It's taken us a long time to get Scarlet Witch looking like Scarlet Witch. Right? Like her yeah. introduction didn't look anything like Scarlet Witch. If we were to get Quicksilver now, not dead, he would look demonstrably different. There's almost kind of this been apologetic tone in these movies of yeah these suits are a little goofy but i I think these movies do themselves a favor when they lean into the comic design i can't right like loki with the horns better than loki without the horns oh for sure right i prefer the long horns exactly iron man calls him reindeer games oh that's beautiful it's glorious his avengers look is probably the best agreed arguably the best agreed it's fantastic. So more of that. Glad to see DC's at least getting that right. So we'll see what they do with the actual meat of the story. Who's it's to true. say? That's true. Man, you got me. I was just I've been trying to wrap my head on what an actual present day Quicksilver would look like, and I just yep. am not seeing it. Yeah. He's just on in a t shirt <laughs> that that has a Q on it. He's gotta have a blue blue track suit with some lightning bolts yeah, in just, there. It's gotta look I've, I've never, great. like, been in love with his looks. 
ever in okay. the comics, I guess. Okay. I don't know. So you're saying there's some room for some uh, some flexibility with Quicksilver? I guess. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. This is such a weird one. To think I love about. the Doctor Fate costume that they're showing us. Doctor like Fate, is sick. the blue, the gold chrome helmet. Like it's so sleek. It just reeks of magic. It's my favorite. Right? It's, it's my favorite look out of the entire looks. Yeah. It's I'm, outstanding. But I'm gonna I'm gonna pick on the Eternals a little bit. Like all of their costumes were the same thing, just different colors. Yeah, pretty much. They were the Power right? Rangers. Thank you. Gosh, I was going to say Power Rangers. That's that's all it was. It was, essentially. Yeah. Except without the, the cool helmets. And so the uniqueness of a comic book outfit is part of what makes each character their own. And so I'm very much looking forward and encouraged, again, encouraged by what we're seeing with our guy, Dr. Fate, Black Adam. There's a distinct identity that's being reflected in those costumes, in those outfits. That's great. So... I'll be, I'll be Color curious. me encouraged by that. I'll be curious to see what they do with them after. I, I'm fascinated to see what their origins for these characters are, right? Because Hawkman in the comics, he and Hawk Girl are these individuals that have been reincarnated over and over and over dope. again, which, right, is wild. So if they're going to go that route, incredible. It sure appears like they could with how true to the comics their origin for Black Adam seems to be. So, it's great. I'm looking forward to that a lot. I'm kind of bummed we don't get a Green Lantern who's weak against wood. <laughs> I really wish that was going to be in there. Sorry to let you down, bud. Yeah. Sorry to let you down. Like a D, if we're doing like the, the the original Justice Society of America, that's kind of a bummer that we didn't get that. It's also kind of a bummer that we didn't get a. No, that's all. I, oh <laughs> I just wanted to make fun of him for being weak against trees. There you go. Yeah, that's up there with rocks, dude. That's right up there with rocks. Superman's weak to rocks. Incredible. That Green Lantern, only that one specifically, weak to trees. Here's all I hope for with this Hawkman outfit, right? Hawkman, like he's kind of wearing a chest plate here. I would love to see him lose the chest plate. Just go with the straps across the chest, straight up WWE wrestler style. Okay, yeah, yeah, that'd be fantastic. He'll probably lose it. Love in it in the fight. I hope so. I, I hope so. I mean, I want to see. I want to see this. The mace. That's what I want to see. <laughs> I want to see somebody get maced in the face with an actual mace. That is a not tremendous weapon. Pepper spray. <sighs> what a great weapon. Although, if he did pull out pepper spray, like a bottle of pepper spray, and just sprayed Black Adam in the face, I, I, I would be kind of funny. I'm not gonna lie. I don't even know what I'd do with that. That'd be incredible. I'd be like, dude, I don't, I think I'd be speechless. Man, I mean, can you imagine getting hit with a mace? Not great. Oh, no. No. You, like, there's no way, like, a normal person would live yeah. by just getting hit in the face with a mace <laughs> one time. Nor would you want to. No, you wouldn't want to. No. I mean, that's a, it's a big spiky ball. Yeah. Just straight to your face? No, you're dead. Not what you're going for. Not what you want no. at all. All right, what else do you want to go on with this? That's it. That's yeah. all I had. Love it. There wasn't as much. I thought there, I'm not going <laughs> to lie There might to be you. a little more meat on the bone. When I suggested it, I thought, you know, I, I, I clearly I didn't do my research. But I was like, oh, we're going to get – I heard there's a lot of stuff that came into this. And then I just watched that, and I was like, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> I should have known better than that. Why is Ryan Reynolds there? Then, never mind. Who knows? But Who knows? I was just like, do we know – okay. Do we know which Doctor Fate he's playing? Because there's been like 19 oh, different jeepers. people. No, no clue. No clue. And it doesn't matter. But no. I was just curious. Oh, apparently, apparently Ryan Reynolds might have been Hawkman. Nah, we'll at get one more. Point. We'll get more time. Yeah. He, he. I don't want him to be Hawkman. He's good as Deadpool. We'll leave him be. Correct. Leave him who he is. Don't touch. No, that's great. We got more. What's going to be fun in the coming months is seeing more and more teasers for these. And frankly, it would not be unheard of. During this Batman movie, to get a full-fledged Black Adam trailer. Yeah, we should by then. Yeah, yeah, that's the next one. Absolutely, absolutely. So that'd be cool. That'd be a nice, uh, nice little frosting on top of that cake and to sh- get some, to get some more footage for Black Adam. And you'd think Shazam would be teased at the end of the Black Adam movie. Jeepers! That's, you bet. That's the other one that I keep forgetting about. Shazam: Fury of the Gods. Because we didn't. Because I was trying to think of what the villain is for that movie again. But I know it's uh, a couple some, new villains. some woman. I don't think we're getting that bug thing that they like. <sighs> like they teased at the end of the first right. one. Which, by right. the way, 
bug thing creeps me out. Okay, I don't want that. Yeah. I hope Mr. I hope, Mind. I hope they forget about him. He Mr. Grosses, Mind he's is gross. a he's, he's a tough dude. He's is icky. He's yeah, not Helen the best. Mirren. Yep, Helen that, Mirren and Lucy Liu. I haven't seen her in something in a long time. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah. All right, good stuff. Well, hey, let's let's talk a little Lord of the Rings. All right. Okay. So, what do you know about Lord of the Rings, Riles? Where, where do you stand with your Lord of the Rings fandom? Do you have any? Not really. Fresh out. Now I. So how exciting for you. Yes. So for me, <laughs> I'll, just, I'll give you my Lord of the Rings. My Lord of the Rings background re- relies solely on my roommate. Okay. Chance is obsessed. You bet. Okay. My, the story that I tell Another people about. reason why about, I love Chance. About Chance's obsession. And I don't know if I've told you this story, but I'll tell it here because I, I think it's hilarious. I came back from lunch and he was like chilling in some teacher's classroom or something. Of course. And uh, he's at the whiteboard and he looks at me. He's like, right. He's like, you gotta look at this. He's like, look at what? He goes, look at this. And I, he points at the whiteboard, and it's just this gigantic map. I'm like, <laughs> what is it, dude? I'm like, what is it? He's like, this is the entire map from Lord of the Rings. I was like, uh, okay. He's like, I did it from memory. I was like, you, you just did this for fun? No way. Chance just pulled that yeah. out of the old. And he goes, yeah. Mine. He goes, yeah. Wow. And he's like, pull it up. He was like, pull what up? He's like, pull the map up. You, I was like, you want me to pull up the Lord of the Rings map right now? He's like, yeah, double check me. And he's like, I think I got the trails right too. I was like, you got the trails right of the paths <laughs> the characters took in this movie. He goes, yeah, check me. I looked it up and sure enough, he almost had the paths like perfect. Dude, that's great. I was like, I'm, this is interesting. This is a side of you that I haven't seen that's at this point in time. But he, uh, now he's very against this show. And I'd rather have him tell that side of the story than myself. But uh, okay. He's, okay. he's not looking forward to the, the show. I don't, think he, I don't think he'll watch it. Mm. I think he said he's not going to watch it. But um, He's going to watch it. I'm going to spoil it for you right now. Chance is going to watch he it. He said he's not going to watch it. Chance, you're listening. You're going to watch it. You know you are. Uh, no. Don't, don't be I, stubborn. I, you're going to watch it. I'm telling you right now. He's in. I know. He's in. He, the way he talks about this, he's a very, very stubborn man. I don't he's see in. it. He's in. I don't see it. He's gonna be in. Okay. You, you watch. He's gonna end up being in. Like he's like the visuals look great. I'm not excited for the story. Is what he said. Fascinating. He's like I don't think the story is gonna be good. And okay. Apparently they're adding a lot of characters that weren't in the book. Sure. Or whatever. Well, I don't know. Okay. So that's good to know where where you stand. So the Lord of the Rings. Here's the deal. All right. They stand at the top for me. All yeah. right. These are my favorite movies of all time, and I don't see that changing ever. Extended now, edition, I'm assuming. Oh, like you have to watch oh, extended. You're one of those guys. Yeah. yeah I yeah. I've seen the first two extended, and then I the third uh-uh. extended. Oh, and I don't remember anything that happens in the first two. <laughs> That's where I'm at. Here's the deal: the extended movies are fantastic, but what's important to remember is that the originals are tremendous. Like they're excellent. You don't have to watch the extended versions. I think it's a lot of fun to watch them. But I would just as enjoy watching the standard releases right now. Uh, I would get a ton of joy, a ton of joy X. out of that. Chance, Chance refuses. Like he's like, you have to watch the extended. That's how he is. Yep. My, yep. my dad loves these movies too. I get that. They're incredible. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna draw from from my little archives. <laughs> all right, and we're just gonna go we're just gonna go word for word here because I think this really summarizes my feelings for the Lord of the Rings movies and then we'll transition here into the show. All right. So this okay. is my this is my top thirty movies and a little little segue here. I cheat on this list. Like this is a list that follows its own rules and those rules okay. are my own. So I don't pick individual movies you unless pick. I want to. I I will package trilogies together and include them in one spot. Now, there's some limitations to that. So, like with the MCU, I'm not taking the whole MCU and saying, hey, you exist here. No, you I, can't. No, no. But with trilogies, when they're telling a cohesive story in a relatively modest amount of time, I would rather include those as one whole, with the exception of something like Spider Man 2, okay, with Toby. I think that's just an unbelievable movie. What came before and after, not on the same level. So I choose to put that on my list in its own separate category, unburdened by those other two. Yeah. But Lord of the Rings movies, man, they're all good. They're all great. They're all the best. 
So they all hold that top spot. I think that's fair. So anyway, here we go. Word for word. Lord of the Rings trilogy, number one. No shock that this is in the top spot for me, really. These movies hooked me as soon as Fellowship of the Ring came out in 2001 through its epic finale in 2003 with Return of the King. It's rare to see such a massive story played out so completely and cohesively over the course of multiple films, similar to the appeal provided by the cohesiveness of the Marvel movie universe. But the world that the filmmakers develop is unparalleled in its depth of detail. I also love the time that is given to develop the continuously growing cast of characters as the movies progress. The Lord of the Rings trilogy is genuinely and thoroughly immersive. What's equally impressive is that with the passing of time, these films should hold their value for decades to come. So far, two decades in, so good. That speaks to both the quality of the CGI that is used in the films, the groundbreaking technological development of motion capture CGI being the most noteworthy, and to the wisdom with which it is employed. CGI isn't abused in these movies. Rather, the filmmakers rely on strong and deeply detailed set and costume designs to provide the foundation upon which the CGI can superbly supplement. Finally, the score accompanying each of these films is absolutely epic. For my money, it's as worthy of canonization as the Star Wars theme. And a nice fact that uh, you might soon forget... The Lord of the Rings trilogy won a combined 17 Oscars, including the Best Visual Effects Award for three consecutive years and winning all 11 categories for which Return of the King was nominated in 2003. Out of a combined 30 total Oscar nominations. In addition, all three films were nominated for the Oscar for Best Picture with Return of the King bringing home the lone trophy in that category. So... It's not just me that thinks this movie is good, a.k.a. Man of Steel. (laughs) These movies, they're incredible. They're absolutely outstanding. And to segue here into our Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power show, I am very excited for this. And here's the deal. It could suck. When it comes out in September, it could be a real letdown. But part of what gives me such enthusiasm for this show is that it is a prequel set thousands of years prior to the Lord of the Rings movies, which you can do that when you're dealing with a bunch of immortals like elves, uh, dwarves, Sauron, all these evil forces working against the forces of good. There's plenty of fertilized and yet untilled earth that uh, that can is just waiting to be harvested here, just waiting. And so I'm stoked to see what they come up with. And if it bombs, Riley, it's not going to sully the experience that I have had with the Lord of the Rings movies in any way. Because this is just uncharted territory. They're diving into it. I love that. I love that they're not doing a sequel to the movies. That would terrify me. I don't want to see what happens immediately after The Return of the King ends. I don't want that. But to show what came thousands of years before, awesome. I'm in. And the books, right? So I've got my Lord of the Rings set here. I've got my Hobbit here. None of what they're showing in this or exploring in this show has anything to do with what you read in those books. So unless you went deep dive into the prequels that J.R.R. Tolkien wrote himself, which is few of us, me not included, I think you can come into this series with a fresh set of eyes So we'll see. There's a lot of time between now and September. We're going to learn a lot more between now and then. But what we know so far, the characters that they are choosing to tell us that they're having in the movie, or excuse me, in the show, and those that they're not telling us about, I think is outstanding. Outstanding. So I couldn't look forward to this more. So I could really be bummed out in September if it comes out and it sucks. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but I think it's going to be great. Well, you know the visual effects are going to be good. With the amount of money they've spent on this TV show, which is insane. Yep. Yep. So that's, weirdly, that's probably one of my main concerns. Is the budget. Is the budget and is the visual effects. Uh, the Lord of the Rings movies just look incredible. And they struck such a unique balance between using CGI but not overusing it. And I think when they came out with the Hobbit movies... 
those movies relied way too much on CGI. It just kind of ruined the fantasy. Uh, it just provided this clear disconnect because you're watching the movie going, this, this isn't real. The Lord of the Rings felt real. Like there was plenty of CGI in there, but there was so much practical just movie making magic going on that it was very easy to get immersed in that world. Um, so we'll we'll see if they strike a similar balance here. It hasn't really been the pattern with the direction that movies and TV shows are going. It's more of it, not less. Um, so I, I really don't know what to anticipate necessarily, but I'm hopeful. I'm really hopeful. Fascinating to see for how long the show will last. I know the eight episodes are what we're you know what we're being promised. How here long in are September. the episodes? No idea. I, I got. I got to believe it's close long. to an hour. It's gotta right, be right. And the other thing that I don't know, but I would assume is that this is set up to be more than just a one uh, one season and then we're done. <laughs> I'm sure that it's gonna run for as long as it can. Oh, probably sure. a little too long. It'll probably end. Here's my really years in the future prediction. It'll probably end not great because it'll keep going for too long, like seasons eight or nine, let's say. But, but. Been there. I tell you what, I think it's also going to hit a really sweet, untapped vein of story that those of us that are current Lord of the Rings fans are going to love, and those folks like you that have yet to really feast are going to come into a fresh banquet, Riley, and you're just going to, you're going to enjoy. That's where I'm at, man. I'm pumped. Very excited. Very excited. I just, I've been here before with Game of Thrones. Yep. I went on that whole journey. Yep. And uh, I, I was there for the fall, or I was there for the, I was there for the rise and the fall. Was anybody happy with the conclusion of that show? No. Anybody? No. So, yeah. see, yeah. just fun facts. I didn't facts. think so. Fun facts about that you show. Bet. So, George R.R. R. Martin was a very large part of the writing from seasons one through yep. five. He leaves after season five to go finish the books that he needs to go finish. Which is fair. So I can start reading the books because I refuse to read the books until he's done. Yep. I stand by that. Okay. 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 With you. Back to what I'm saying. Right. So then the writers, the other two writers, they write six, seven, eight. HBO said, hey, we'll give you 10 seasons. Don't be afraid to just flesh this out. Mm -hmm. And those two were like, now we'll get it done in eight because... They had an interview to get their own Star Wars trilogy. Now, guess what happened in that Star Wars trilogy? Whoops. What didn't happen because why? Their creative differences. And you want to know why? Because you're not that great a writer. <laughs> because George R.R. R. Martin carried you and it showed. Uh -huh. It showed throughout the entire thing. And then, yeah. Did it show up for those last three seasons or especially, was it mostly the last? Especially season eight. Okay. It felt like they squeezed three seasons into one. Gotcha. So for eight, it should have been focused on one portion yep. of of the last season. The season nine should have focused on the next portion, and then season ten should have focused sure. all on the last. Sure. Instead, they were like, Ugh. just smushed it smushed all together. Smushed it all together and rushed it, and okay. that's that's where they went wrong. Yeah. They rushed it. They didn't tie. They didn't take all this time like they did in the the first five seasons when they're building the characters and they're intertwining the story right and yeah hmm. it's a major bummer but the books are fantastic apparently but i'm waiting to read those like i said yeah we'll see how this plays out i'm i'm excited i, I respect where chance is coming from i'm not there at all like i'm very much the opposite of that where i love the movies and very much looking forward to the show um so i hope he opens himself up you should. This is definitely something you should talk to him about oh, before yeah. the Batman movie. Yeah, because and pick his brain about because oh. he's one Most of those definitely. guys that deep dove. You know, right? He's got the right. He, he's got the tree on his on his hand. Sure, sure. Because he he's, huge he's, fan. Yeah, oh, huge fan. Love obsessed. it. Obsessed. I love it. He's Good got for a chance. Big map in his room. Good I for think. chance. He loves big. Yes. Love it. Good for you, Chance. So stay who you are, man. <laughs> but watch so, the show. Yeah, I, I'm telling you right now, like it would take a lot. It's gonna take a lot for him to watch the show. I think he'll wait for the show to finish, see reviews. Okay. Because I think, because I don't know, I don't think he's the only diehard, diehard fan no. of that. Oh, that's no, no, no. against the show. No, I'm sure there are. I'm sure there are others out there. Um, 
to me, this is just a this is a no lose proposition. It's a prequel set thousands of years before the movie, so it cannot taint the movies uh, in any way. It, it it just can't, yeah, and it won't. So it's they're playing with house money. They're going for it. They're going big. They're not going you know low budget. I love that there's a big budget. Doesn't guarantee success. But it does make it more possible that the visuals will at least be appropriate. And so, have they said what like the like the synopsis? What's like the synopsis of the show? Then no, nothing, no, nothing real tangible other than thousands of years before the events of Lord of the Rings. There's characters that show up in the Lord of the Rings movies that play. I don't know if I want to say significant. That play substantial enough roles that are in this show. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know if the show is going to necessarily focus on those individual characters or not. Um, so it's it's still a lot of unknown at this point, Riles. Anybody that says, oh, it's definitely going to be about this, like no one really knows yet. Okay, that's what I was curious yeah, about. They've been really buttoned up with with just about everything that you could want to know. Like, it's all speculative. So we'll see. Looking right. forward to it, though, bud. I think that does it for I, us, Riles. I think Riles. it does. Yeah. I think that's about it. Bring us home, man. Um, on that note, like, sh- follow, share, subscribe. Um, yeah, next time you see us, it will be a Batman review. You bet. A Batman review. You bet. Holy oh, crap. That's great to say it's, out loud. It's starting to hit me, man. That's just great to say it's starting out loud. to hit me. I think that seven's turning into an eight. There we go. Quick. There we go. So on that note, uh, Godspeed. Peace.